Alright, what is going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power and this is going to be the last news video of 2019. Today is December 30th, 2019 um, and tomorrow I will be posting kind of a year in review video so be on the lookout for that. Now, first up in the news, Big Rami has posted his first training video during his prep for the 2020 Arnold Classic. Now, the first video that Rami posted was a video on Instagram doing tricep pushdowns, um, where again, you know, he's Big Rami, so obviously he looks big. Then he followed up that video with another video posted by his supplement sponsor, Dragon Pharma. And in that video, he's training back. Now, in both videos, Big Rami is pretty well covered up. The first video doing tricep pushdowns, um, he's wearing a t-shirt. In the video, training back, he's wearing a hoodie. So, obviously, it's kind of hard to tell how Big Rami is looking at this stage in his prep. Now, it's kind of hard to believe that at this stage in the game, we're only two months out from the Arnold Classic. So, about eight weeks, maybe a little bit more than eight weeks, eight or nine weeks from the 2020 Arnold Classic. So, even though it's technically still 2019, we are rapidly approaching the 2020 Arnold. And these bodybuilders that are competing there are really starting to get more into the serious weeks of their prep. So, seeing training updates like this from bodybuilders at this point in their prep... Um, is something worth taking a look at. Now, the main thing we're going to be looking for from Big Rami at the 2020 Arnold Classic is conditioning. He said multiple times on social media that he knows that the route that he has to go this year in this competitive season is a more conditioned route, a downsized route, and a leaner route, and not necessarily the Big Rami that we're used to seeing where he's played, played the size game multiple times in the past and came in a little bit off. Now, Big Rami is pretty much the biggest name in this lineup, no pun intended. Um, he was one of the biggest invitations this year. He has never competed at the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. This will be the first year you see him compete. I'm not going to harp on it too much because I've done several videos talking about the Arnold Classic lineup already. Um, but that is what Big Rami is currently looking like at about eight to nine weeks out from the 2020 Arnold Classic in March in Columbus, Ohio. Now, next up in the news, it has been over two years now since Rich Piana passed away, um, but there's been a recent video posted to YouTube where there was an interview done with Rich Piana's girlfriend at the time when he passed away, Chanel. Um, now, in this interview, there were some interesting things said about the passing of Rich Piana where Chanel wanted to clarify some things about how Rich passed away. So, this interview was posted on the Alexi Moskin YouTube channel. And Chanel specifically shed some light on the circumstances surrounding Rich passing. Now, we know that when he passed away, he was actually getting a haircut from Chanel at the time. He kind of fell over during that haircut, um, and that's when he passed. But in this particular interview, she actually went into more detail about the circumstances. Um, and she goes on to explain that he definitely didn't pass away from recreational drug use. And she says that she feels it was probably a result of all the gear and other stuff that he used. Um, and that apparently he had snorted some pre-workout at that time, which was found in the house and was mistaken for recreational drugs. Um, and that could have been a contributing factor as well. So overall, it was a very interesting interview coming out over two years after the passing of Rich. Um, and I highly recommend you guys go check out that interview. Again, it's on the Alexi Moxion World YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description box below if you want to check that out. Now, next up in the news, we have Larry Wheels going viral yet again with his latest Instagram post, um, Curling Humans, which is something I have not ever seen before. Um, and in the caption, he says, 70 kilogram human bell curls. 70 kilograms for you Americans out there translates to 154.3 pounds. I know in one arm is his girlfriend and in the other arm is some guy. He does it for a couple of reps. This video receiving over a million views on Instagram in less than 24 hours um, and is just the latest of several viral stunts by Larry Wheels. And I've got to say, Larry Wheels never disappoints. You can always count on Larry Wheels for some good viral moments wrapping up the year. Now, next up in the news, Joe Rogan. Who would have thought we'd be talking about Joe Rogan on a Nick Strength and Power news episode? So in episode 1405 of the Joe Rogan Experience, the Sober October 3 recap, Joe Rogan has been making the uh, headlines here because in this video they are doing the Sober October recap, so they're weighing in. And in this video, Joe Rogan strips down to weigh in. I believe he weighs in at 205 in this video. Um, but the thing that a lot of people were talking about with this video was when Joe weighs in and takes his shirt off, well, number one, obviously he's extremely jacked. Everyone knows that Joe Rogan is in very, very good shape. He trains very hard, um, and he's well known um, for just being a very active guy. So it's no surprise to me that he was in good shape and he was pretty jacked. But the main thing that people noticed, and a lot of people were sending me, 
was, hey, Joe Rogan has a bubble gut in this video. So when I watched this video, I did notice that he had kind of a blocky midsection, but I don't think it's the notorious bubble gut that we're familiar with in bodybuilding. I think in bodybuilding, it's often caused by maybe a combination of overeating, growth hormone, and insulin use. Um, and the extreme size that these guys get up to is responsible for the inflation of the midsection like that. With Joe Rogan, I think we're looking at something entirely different. Keep in mind, Joe Rogan is a pretty short guy. And what I've noticed about Joe's physique, he's got a very, very narrow and short torso and appears to have very, very long limbs in contrast to that torso. And Joe often says that his workouts involve extreme core training. He does some extreme methods for training his core. Um, and he also said prior to this weigh-in, he had a very large meal. So I think this is just a combination of the fact that Joe said he ate a lot before he weighed in. He's kind of a shorter guy. I believe he's five foot seven. So to weigh 205 at five foot seven is pretty heavy for that height. I think it's just mostly to do with how his body is proportioned. Now, I could be wrong here. I know that Joe has gone on record to say he has or he does currently use TRT, um, testosterone replacement therapy, and human growth hormone, HGH. Um, so that could be a contributing factor, um, but I don't think he's taking any of those to the extreme as far as dosaging that would cause him to have a midsection problem like this, but it's entirely possible. So this has kind of been a clip that's going viral. People were asking me to talk about it. That's my opinion on it. I think it has more to do with the way that Joe's built um, versus any kind of possible drug use. Now, next up in the news, we have a new update from Joseph Banya. For those of you guys who are not aware, Joseph Banya is Arnold Schwarzenegger's son. And one of the things that Joseph is becoming known for is the fact that he is pursuing bodybuilding himself, following in the footsteps of his father, um, and posting on Instagram, frequently trying to um, imitate and resemble the poses that his dad famously hit or even made famous in this example. Um, in this photo that he posted recently, I believe he posted it a day ago, he's hitting the Mantis pose. Now, the Mantis pose is a classic bodybuilding pose, which really was kind of made popular by Arnold himself. It's a pose that is really best pulled off by someone that has very large arms. The intent here is to highlight both the tricep and the bicep at the same time. So the tricep of the arm in front and the bicep of the arm in the back, and then kind of at the same time, um, a variation of like a side chest pose. You kind of want to show the chest development here and the smallness of the waist. But the primary emphasis of the mantis pose is to show off both the tricep and the bicep. So for somebody like Arnold Schwarzenegger, this was a very effective pose to hit. And I think just like the other poses, uh, Joseph is doing a very good job of emulating Arnold here. And I think actually this pose works a lot better for Joseph than some of the other ones do. So shout out to Joseph. You know, I love you, buddy. Now, since we talked a little bit about Joe Rogan here, I want to talk a little bit about another popular podcast host. The host of the popular podcast, No Jumper, Adam22, recently posted a video training at that world-famous outdoor beach gym, the Tulum Jungle Gym. Now, Adam has recently undergone a pretty significant transformation. He's lost a significant amount of weight, um, and he's been training a lot more frequently. And I've had some conversations with Adam on Instagram um, and one of the things that we were talking about is while he's doing this transformation, my suggestion to Adam is that he competes in some sort of bodybuilding competition, whether it be men's physique, classic physique, bodybuilding at an amateur level, and then vlog the prep process. I think it'd be something that would be very interesting for his fans because he's not really a guy that typically fits the mold of the bodybuilding scene. He's covered in tattoos. He's very tall, pretty much the opposite of what you would expect to see from a bodybuilder. But I think him documenting that weight loss journey and the prep process of a bodybuilding show, whether he places good or bad, would be motivational to a lot of people to see him actually go on that journey, whether he does well or not. So if you want to see Adam compete in a bodybuilding show, comment in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up. I'll show Adam the comments. I'll, I'll send him a direct message on Instagram. But that's the vlog that I want to see on the Adam22 channels. Adam22 prepping for his first amateur bodybuilding show. Now, next up in the news, this story might interest some of you guys that are fans of the fitness division at the Olympia or in the IFBB in general. Oksana Grishina, one of the most legendary female fitness competitors in the world, um, she retired from the fitness division at the Olympia back in 2017, but recently she took to Instagram to announce she will be making a comeback to the fitness Olympia in 2020. Now, speaking of comebacks at the 2020 Mr. Olympia, another thing I, I think that we should all be looking out for in the coming year is Flex Lewis. Now, if you guys remember, 
Flex Lewis intended or announced that he was intending to take a year off from bodybuilding in 2019 to focus on switching over from the 212 category and moving up to the men's open category with the goal of competing in the men's open Mr. Olympia. So in 2020, one of the things that we should be looking out for is number one, Flex Lewis attempting to qualify for the 2020 Mr. Olympia because we did not know when he made that announcement if being uh, 212 Mr. Olympia champion would qualify you for men's open Mr. Olympia, but we saw that his name was not on that most recent list of qualified competitors for the men's open Mr. Olympia in 2020. So it appears that flex will have to qualify. So I would expect sometime early in 2020 in the competition season to see flex Lewis competing to attempt to qualify competing in men's open, mind you to qualify for the 2020 Mr. Olympia. So that's another thing to be looking out for at the 2020 Olympia. Now, finally in the news, Redcon 1 posted a video with their newest athlete, Cedric McMillan, where Cedric explains why he decided to join Redcon 1 as their newest men's open bodybuilder. And I thought this was a very heartfelt and touching video, and I wanted to share a clip of it here with you guys in this video. What's up? This is Cedric McMillan here, coming to you for Redcon 1. <laughs> a new chapter in my life. Uh, probably a new chapter for Redcon as well making this change coming to be a part of this company um, is monumental for me the owner aaron i've known him been around him you know different shows and stuff for years so it's good to see him uh, accomplish so much and to build such a solid team some of the staff i've known them for years as well so you know it's like meeting some some old friends come down here and uh to be able to see the the business side of the name to meet all of the members of the team to see the warehouse and uh, the way they bring products from being produced to actually bring it to the customers you know for me is the important part i set a standard for myself to make credibility be number one it wouldn't be possible for me to work for uh, a company that I didn't believe in uh, or a company or a brand that didn't hold credibility. There's been times where I wanted to uh, help out uh, an old friend. Maybe he's you know putting on a bodybuilding show and he has no support, no sponsors, no nothing. And uh, he gives me a call like, Cedric, can you help? And I'm like, I have nothing, but I know somebody who can. And I would send a quick message uh, to Aaron you know, and, and he would put something together to send out to help, you know, whenever it was necessary. And so that for me, you know, made me know that, that Aaron was somebody that was true. And for him to create a company to where he could just, yeah, I'll send you some stuff out for your friend, you know, that, that lets me know that the way he's running this business is true as well. Dallas. I'll never forget you, and I'll make sure nobody else ever forgets you. I wish we could, I wish we could have that time on stage again. I wish you were still here. I know we're not friends like that, but I would switch places with you if it meant that you could still be here. I wish we could be teammates. I'll do the best I can to finish this job for you. I'm Cedric McMillan, and I'm Redcon One. So that will do it for today's video, video, guys. The last news video of 2019. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to this channel. And if you do, I will see you guys in 2020. As always.